Honorable Chairperson of the United Progressive Alliance, Shrimati Sonia Gandhi Ji, Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, Secretary, Ministry of Information Broadcasting, Shri Bimal Julka, Principal Director General of the Press Information Bureau, Shri Mati Neelam Kapoor, my Honorable Ministerial colleagues, esteemed ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, I would like to thank the Honorable Prime Minister and the Honorable Chairperson of the UPA for consenting to inaugurate the National Media Center. 21 years after it was first conceptualized, during the eighth five-year plan, the National Media Center is finally ready to make its debut among the institutions that underpin our democratic edifice. I would like to congratulate all those who persevered to translate this vision into a reality. While we have endeavored to create a space, we hope thought leaders, scholars, media professionals, and people in public affairs would invigorate it with, into a vibrant institution that reinforces the core values of the idea of India. We live in an era of an information overload. The media landscape has transformed exponentially over the past two decades. The transformation has brought its own set of challenges to the media industry. India today mirrors the world in global cross-media consumption, consumption patterns. A very unfortunate collateral of this epoch-making change is the print industry globally. It is distressing to learn that iconic newspapers and magazines around the world are ceasing to print. However, India seems to have bucked the trend. The Indian newspaper market will be the only one to grow at a double-digit compound annual growth rate of 10% and would emerge as the world's sixth largest newspaper market by 2017, as per industry reports on media and entertainment. The regional and vernacular print sector is growing on the back of rising literacy and low print media penetration, as well as heightened interest of advertisers wanting to leverage these new markets. According to industry sources, print has a combined market penetration of a ballpark of about 14% roughly. Therefore, the print industry has the potential to expand its footprint and readership across the national canvas. This sector would thus be able to weather the shifting sands of technology, at least in the Indian context. The Indian broadcasting sector has grown from one channel in 1991 to 852 at the last count. After a statutory rationalization, the number now stands at about 795 odd channels. While this has brought about plurality, it has resulted in market fragmentation also. There are about 15.4 crore television households in India. Unfortunately, the news and current affairs genre makes up only 7% of the total television viewership. The remaining 93% of this universe is occupied by general entertainment channels despite there being 395 odd news and current, affair channel, current affairs channels in the country. This generates hope that there is an exponential potential for growth provided news broadcasters and multi-system operators are prepared to reimagine their content and carriage paradigms respectively. In both the print and television genres, the revenue model unfortunately remains heavily dependent on advertising. To give consumers the benefit of better quality of service and correct the skewed revenue models in the broadcasting sector, government launched a massive digitization exercise in 2012, with 10 million set-top boxes seeded in phase one, another 20 million in phase two, and yet another 80 million scheduled for phase three and phase four. By the end of 2014, no one in the broadcasting sector can really say that bottom lines and balance sheets in August 2013 are not looking better than in October 2012. The MSME sector must also endeavor to leverage this unique business opportunity and convert it into a India digitization story, even in manufacturing terms. For the news broadcasting industry, the advertisement cap requires the migration path synchronous with the rollout of digitization. I hope the TRAI 
would give its considered reconsideration to this issue. The new frontier is, of course, digital. Eric Schmidt and Jared Cohen, in the seminal, in the seminal treatise, made some precinct observations which are paraphrased as follows. The internet is the largest experiment involving anarchy in history, and it has succeeded. The last four are my words. It represents the largest ungoverned space on planet Earth. Never before in the history have so many people from so many places had so much power on their fingertips. Every two days, more digital content is created than from the dawn of civilization until 2003. What is evolving is a tale of two civilizations, one physical that has evolved over the millennia and one virtual that is still very much in formation. The new media rides on the back of this worldwide web. In India alone, 86 point, in, in, in India alone, with 86.7 crore mobile phones, 12.4 crore internet users and expected to grow to 37 crores by 2017, 8 crore people on Facebook, 1.8 crore on Twitter, and expanding exponentially, this is truly the medium of the future. The government has recently taken a decision to create a new media wing in the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting to have an institutional presence in this virtual civilization. Another medium that till a decade back was considered a casualty of the tectonic technological shifts but now stands poised on the threshold of a new wave is radio. High mobile penetration and cheap call rates in our country has brought this renaissance into replay. The union cabinet has approved the ascending e-auction of 839 new FM radio channels across 294 cities in the country. Yet another sector which has just completed a centenary of existence is films. This industry has grown but still has tremendous potential. As per an industry estimate, about 14 million Indians go to movies every day. As per another report, the film industry is valued at about 112.4 billion, <coughs> billion Indian, Indian rupees and is, is expected to grow to about 193 billion Indian rupees by 20, 2017, a compound annual growth rate of about 11.5%. The regional film industry is a steady contributor to this growth process. As we speak, a committee under Chief Justice retired Shri Mukul Mudgil is winding down its remit to overhaul the archaic Cinematographic Act of 1952. Another task force under the leadership of Shri Sam Petroda is close to finalizing their recommendations on a comprehensive restructuring of Prasar Bharti. Yet another group of eminent persons is reimagining the entire universe of government, government communications. While the UPA government has more than, walked, more than walked the extra mile to create an enabling environment, as evidenced by the fact that industry reports indicate that the media sector has grown by a compound annual growth rate of over 9% between 2007 and 2012, and is projected to grow at about 15% between 2012 and 2017, there are, however, some paradoxes that all stakeholders in this sector must try and collectively resolve to find the elusive golden mean. The first is the paradox of the short fuse. There have been an increase in information dismination mechanisms, quay and increased intolerance to hear the other's point of view. The paradox of flawed revenue models, quay questionable revenue generation practices, the paradox of TRPs, Quay the truth. Media trials, quay a fair judicial trial guaranteed by Article 21 of the Constitution. Anonymity masquerading as privacy in the new media space, the spectator of the hidden people. Non emergence of global rules of engagement in the virtual civilization. Last mile neutrality among carriage providers so that content providers get a level playing field and are able to reap the benefit of convergence. And finally, of course, self-regulation, quay, a statutory remit. The UPA government's media philosophy has been an essay in persuasion and not an essay in regulation. 
While appreciating the role that various mediums of the media have played over the years as we try and catalyze the growth ambience in this sector, it is also my responsibility to flag the aberrations and gaps and see how they can be best surmounted with the cooperation of all concerned to ensure that the discourse remains constructive. May I once again thank all of you ladies and gentlemen for honoring us with your presence here today morning. And uh, I apologize if uh, some people had to wait. Thank you very much.